Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour and welcome back to uh, another interview. So we've only ever done two interviews on this channel before. We've done Boyker, I think, and we did Fargo. Uh, but here today, we are going to interview the mighty Vivid. So Vivid is a very, very strong player over the last few years. has kind of come out of nowhere and now competing at the top. Had very, very strong performances against a lot of good players. He's won some tournaments and had um, and taken some good wins from some good players in uh, in tournaments as well so um but yeah he, he will get promoted to uh what we call an expert badge so uh, if you're familiar with the website called gamereplays.org you can get this little badge next to your name which basically says zero out expert zh expert it's a little blue badge i think is the color and there are already 19 experts i think about probably half of them don't really play the game anymore but it's probably like another half the other half that are um, actually still playing the game for example players that have the expert badge i have one xgal has one Rage has one, Size has one, and I mean, I'll probably put a list on on the on the screen now, so you can see uh, you can see the expert um, the expert badges. So yeah, typically when you win a big tournament, like you win the World Series, or you have a really good performance in the World Series, which Vivid just re recently did. But uh, to top that off as well, Vivid's also won tournaments in the past. So there was a was it it was like a round robin between all the best non-expert players, and Vivid did win that one. And there was players in there like Shea, which is the replay we're going to watch now. There was, uh, who else was in that? Freestyler was in it. Um, and a number of other players. So yeah, I probably should have got all of his stats, but you know what? <laughs> it took me long enough writing all those interview questions. So right now, we are going to watch this replay of Vivid, and we are also going to get Vivid on the phone now. So let's uh, let's see if we can get him now. Anyway, congratulations then on your ex uh, expert badge. So... It's well known you've you. done you did very well in the in the World Series. Um, almost get into the I think this almost the semi final. I think did you get knocked out of the semi or the the quarter final? Uh, the quarter finals, I think. But yeah. then I just mentioned before as well. I did a kind of little intro that um, you'd done really well in other tournaments as well. So I remember there were the the tournament that stands out for me is when there was um uh, it was the next best uh, next best players from the experts it wasn't the expert players but it was like you in it there was shay in it there was freestyler these kind of players and that was one that you won a big one that you won recently is that right yep yeah cool so uh yeah congratulations you will get the expert badge on game replays first of all and then i just wondered if you uh, wanted to share any information to viewers about yourself like I know we've got actually a picture that I need to put up on the screen of you, of you as well. But do you want to tell people, what, uh, I don't know, where are you from, your age? I mean, remember this, this information is going on the internet, so and it'll probably stay there for a while. So you, you can reveal as much or a little information as you like. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, well, I go, I play under the name Vivid, and I'm 20 years old from Malaysia. I think that's about it. Pretty short. Yeah, the pictures you sent me was from a city, yeah? Yeah. I was okay. with one of my buddies. Very nice, very nice. Um, and how long have you been playing Zero Hour? And actually, I just added a little bit. I know you didn't see this question before, but what, what got you into Zero Hour in the first place? And I realized I never asked that. Uh, what got me into Zero Hour? Well, I actually discovered the game through my brother's laptop. It was in like the end of 2017 and yeah i mean i thought the game was pretty dead that time so i wasn't really active at all just played a couple of games now and then and it was actually your channel that got me into it because i discovered it later also and then i found out that uh, there was still a community and about game replays and the tournaments that were going on so yeah it got me more interested and i uh, joined game replays in 2019 and that's when I kind of you could say got more active and started playing nice what what year did your yeah. mate show you the game then was it 2017 you said yeah 2017 yeah. was when I it was in the end of 2017 actually so okay and you, you started playing from then but only like took it seriously from 2019 you reckon yeah Okay, so then from like 2019 to 21, you've actually, well, I was saying before, I think uh, you're one of the quickest improved players of like recent yeah. times that I can think of. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, what else have we got? Um, uh, well, <laughs> that leads me nicely on. What, what, what do you think has helped you become so good in such a sh short space of time? I think the only other player I can think of that's become good in a short space of time is like Shea, but it's probably over a longer period of time. 
what do you think might have helped you if you'd like in dedicating like eight hours a day to it if you've been getting tips from someone or what do you think has helped oh okay um well i think firstly i'm i'm i'd like to think at least i'm a quick learner and i can adapt to some situations maybe a bit faster but it's also just i guess spamming with top players and not you know uh avoiding them so yeah just spamming hard games against the best players yeah um so it's often mentioned on the forums that you might get tips or coaching from a player called spaulding for those who don't know spaulding spaulding's never expert player been an expert for a very long time actually one of the oldest um yeah. So yeah, it's sometimes mentioned that you might get tips from from him. Is that true? First of all, and if you if you are getting any tips, are there uh, are they are they helping you? Are they valuable? And is there anything you're willing to share with us? Maybe that has helped you. Okay. Uh, well, I've actually heard the rumor. Yeah, but I haven't really gotten any special like coaching or tips from Spalding. But we are in the same plan, and we discuss maybe some strats sometimes or some builds, but nothing major, I think. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like some secret secret yeah, tip that he's, <laughs> he might tell you and then it just suddenly makes you good. Like I think yeah. some people in the forums might believe. <laughs> yeah. Um who do you look up to in like the um oh, what, what did I say here? For people that, Yeah, sorry. For people who look up to you rather um and I want maybe want to become the next Zira expert. Do you have any advice for them or tips or or does it just come back to what you said before where you said just spam against the hard players? Yeah, uh, that and also, well, I've seen a lot of players who's like their micro is pretty good, but their macro isn't that good. Mm -hmm. So I would say kind of it, try to focus more on the decision making and the macro part of the game and it will, you will see some difference. You will definitely improve. Okay. So you're saying not just focus on the micro, but yeah, there's other yeah. aspects as well. Decision making yeah. macro. Probably decision making is probably the most important. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Spam and how do you improve that? Well you spam with that the good players, see what yeah. they do, see how to counter it. Yeah. So, so I speak to some people like on in the YouTube comments or on my Discord channel and they're asking for tips and they say, Okay, yeah, I do that. I play against like the hard players, they might say, but then I'm just yeah. losing every time. If they're if they're in that situation where they're maybe losing like ninety percent of their games what uh what would you say to them do they need to like review their replays more or do they need to stop and think or change their equipment yeah well uh firstly i would say probably don't play with someone who's like way way better than you so if you are if you are a semi maybe play with a pro just as long as they're better than you so it's not like very boring mm -hmm. and you can actually have a chance sometimes so yeah yeah, it's something I've seen suggested a few times actually is like don't yeah. play someone who's like a hundred percent better than you. Maybe maybe they're ten yeah. or twenty percent better, and then when you get to that level yeah. then move up, you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um so starting to get to some spicy questions already. Uh who are your top five players right now? If they if they if everyone was to jump on zero round now and play right now, who are your top five players currently? Currently at the moment. Um okay. Well, my top five, uh, not including myself, uh, <laughs> I would add Xcal, obviously number one. Probably yeah. everyone would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, number two, I would actually put Fargo, especially after his recent uh, World Series. I think he did really well there. Yeah. Fair. Although I'm not sure if he's retired now or what, because I haven't seen him really. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Number three, probably Size. Number four, Logica. Mm -hmm. And number five, I would say you. Dominator, okay. yeah. But in my opinion, like from the second position to the fifth position is pretty similar, similar level. Like if it was you versus uh, Fargo, for example, I would probably kind of give it a 50-50. Mm -hmm. Or even though it's position two and position five. Mm -hmm. Or like size versus uh logica mm -hmm. i would also pretty much say 50 50. i think it could go both ways both ways other than xcal as in yeah without including yeah 
thing you're right to be honest i think if you asked a load of players their top five probably they'd all put xcal yeah. and then it'd probably yeah. a combination of the next few players in some kind of yeah. order <laughs> yep um who are your zero idols if anyone like is there any particular player that you used to maybe look at replays of dackle or xcal or logica or someone and you wanted to be like him or who'd you look up to um, well i i haven't actually looked at any of the old old replays but okay I, as i said uh you were kind of the one i watched first so you were probably one of my favorite players and mm -hmm. also size he was like everyone knew him and he was just he played really amazing for a long time so yeah but nowadays many i mean xcal logica so many yeah um and looking at your setup that you sent me so you sent me a cool picture of your setup um i was wondering if you want to share like what mouse and keyboard you use and maybe headset and do you think any of those specific ones that you use or like the quality of them do you think it helps you play better okay um for my mouse it's actually a pretty cheap one i think it's just like a ten dollar mouse it's nothing special but i i like i like its shape and it's how it is i guess i'm just more comfortable with it and uh, for my keyboard i use a mechanical keyboard yeah i think it's better than the normal member membrane keyboards and well i used to use a headset but i kind of stopped using it and i've gone to using earphones now because like my headsets used to hurt my ear a bit after long sessions especially yeah so yeah okay. i i mean it this my setup definitely helps me but i think it's it's just because i'm more comfortable with it like whatever you're comfortable with you should use it it will it'll make you play better i think this depends on your preference yeah I like think some I... players yeah sorry what go on okay like some players might like heavier mouse or lighter mouse or larger or smaller it's just preference yeah i think i got that from when you said like a ten dollar mouse that kind of shows yeah. the comfort yeah. the comfortability yeah. for you is more important <laughs> than necessarily yeah. being a super expensive one or whatever yeah um okay do you use the standard zero hotkeys or have you edited them all and like got some really custom hotkeys going well for most of them i think i'm using the standard one but i have changed a few like important ones like laser lock and uh, evacuating your units and like the war factory and supply i think okay. but yeah most are standard what did you change like the laser lock to for example and like the, the war factory which what, what specific keys did you change them to is it like all over to the left hand side so your hands in one place or uh yeah most of them are the ones that i did change are to the left so like my laser lock it's it's originally l right i think mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've changed it to r and my evac evacuation is a it is used to be v i think yeah my war factory is also A, and my supply is T. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Yeah, I heard a few people. I think even Fargo did that, moved all the keys over to the left. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, clearly helps. Um, what's your favorite game type right now? Is it 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, or maybe something else like Casino? <laughs> uh, my favorite game type, actually, probably is it would be team games, 2v2s and 3v3s. But it is quite hard to kind of get team games because you have to get six good players and they have to be on at the same time. So I probably do play more 1v1s. But I think I enjoy team games more, like 2v2s and 3v3s. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. I yeah. thought you'd say 1v1, but yeah, you're right. Team games can be super fun sometimes. Yep. Um, what's your favorite army and your worst army? Um... I think this is pretty similar to the rest of the people. Like, favorite army is probably Air Force, just because it has so many options. It can go, it can fly, it can go just normal Vs, or it can do some form of both. It just has too many options. And the worst, probably China. Although China can be good in some maps, I think it probably has the highest chance to lose versus most of the other uh, armies yeah fair enough i think that will probably be 
the favorite of a lot of people to be honest, Air Force and China being the, one of the weakest. Yeah. Um, I've just shared my screen again on the second replay. Can you see it again? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, sorry, I don't on. see the game, but I just see a logo, but it's, it's fine. Oh, it might be broken then. Sometimes that happens. Okay, we'll just leave that for now. <laughs> Oops. Oh, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've, I've just I've just stopped the screen sharing for now because sometimes it does that. Um, yeah, what's your favorite? Oh, you might have already covered it. What's your favorite matchup? Like, I know you said Air Force is your favorite, but uh, do you have like a Air Mirror is your favorite or Air versus Tank or something? A matchup. Um, I actually like USA GLAs. Any of that that kind. Yeah. And Maybe GLA mirrors too. Ooh, GLA mirrors too. Yeah. A lot of people don't like GLA mirrors. They say they're boring and whatever, but I actually think they're all right. You know, I'd rather watch a GLA mirror or play a GLA mirror than a USA mirror. Oh yeah, USA mirrors are very, very, they can go sideways real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite map? So I know like there's like the Strange Lands tournament going on. I don't know if you're in yeah. that. I think you are in that yeah. actually. Yeah, 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 I am. Uh, well, my favorite map, I actually like, like I love new maps. So before it used to be like Arctic Lagoon and maybe like Natural Threats. But after seeing these Strangelands maps, I'm, I'm liking them. Like Dralim Desert, Oil Oasis or something like that. I think the name was. Yeah. Cool. It's good. So, to, it's good to hear someone likes the new maps. To be honest. It's, it's just refreshing. Like if you go back and watch... Yeah. It's weird because if you go back and watch the World Series finals for all of the years from like 2010, 2011, 2012, all of these, it, it was always yeah. like a best of five on Tournament Desert only, like the original. Yeah. I, so. I personally do not like TD. I mean, Tournament Desert, I, I just don't like it. I think it's way too overplayed. Yeah, but the it's, sense it's, to be like just one build order yeah. and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um... What's your bit of a random one? What's your opinion on floating in Zira? So you often see players, even top players, Xcal size, these kind of players floating a lot yeah. of cash. Yeah, I, oh. I actually had that issue a lot of times. I mean, just floating when you, especially when you're ahead or something, you just float. I th I think it's really bad. Uh, it, hmm. Only in a few rare cases can it be good. Like when there's no no more money on the map, maybe, or you're 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 just keeping it for like in case you need to quickly make back your something your units like mix for example but usually it's always it's always better just to spend your money as quick as you can so yeah loading not good okay yeah because sometimes uh, i see people like say um it's good to keep some money in the bank so you can react fast you can drop down a firebase when you need to and you don't have to start canceling units from building and stuff but then yeah. you also watch players like Rage, for example, and he's always got like $37, like, because he spent every single penny. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for sure. I mean, floating, especially in the early game, I think it's really bad. I mean, later on, when it goes really late and it's like, you have like five supplies or whatnot, then it's understandable if you float a bit. But early game, you should be using every penny you have. Cool, fair enough. Um, who is your favorite teammate? My favorite teammate uh, would probably be Logica or Xcal, but I think I've played more with Xcal, especially in challenges. So probably Xcal. Okay, and another funny one. What's your opinion on uh, no ecos and dozer hunting to to try and win? Uh, well, I'm not really a fan of it, but it's it's part of the game. And especially in, when you play in these high-level competitive tournaments, it, you're going to have to ex expect to face it. So, yeah, nothing to do about it, I guess. Okay, and I don't know if you've added this up or worked this out, but how much money do you think you might have won from Zira from like tournaments and challenges and stuff like that? Uh, I think um, this is like an estimate not exactly sure probably like two thousand dollars plus oh yeah that's good i wasn't expecting you to say that much that's that's that that's a hell of a lot nice one <laughs> um what's your biggest zero achievement do you think 
biggest achievement um I'm not sure about biggest achievement. I don't really think I've won a really big tournament, but like I've won a couple of like for example the one you mentioned with the other pros mm -hmm. and whatnot and I've reached the finals of the extravaganza which was pretty nice but I lost to Excal in the finals. So yeah, I don't know if that's an achievement. <laughs> I think just getting to the finals mm. against Excal probably you could say that's an achievement. But I think yeah. you probably just your level overall going from in 2019 just taking it, just starting to take it seriously to now being really, really good. Yeah. And that could be an achievement. Yeah, yeah, true. True that actually. <laughs> um, so talking about skill level and stuff, there's often people say, "Oh, Clan Wars stats mean a hell of a lot," and like only only Clan Wars stats show if you, if you're any good or not. But some people say, "Oh, you should only look at tournaments and stuff like that." So, in your opinion, what do you think is the best uh, way of looking at skill level? Do you think it's the Clan Wars stats, Revora stats, challenges, uh, or, or tournament wins only, or do you think it's a mix? Well, I think I think. All of them overall, but I would prioritize probably the tournaments and the challenges because that's where people kind of come to play and to win. And it's like uh, no excuses if you lose. So yeah, I mean, Clan Wars and Revora, you can you can come on to play for fun games and whatnot. It's kind of more chill, but tournaments and challenges is where it kind of proves whether you are you can beat the good players i guess yeah um so question i often see people asking like stream chats and stuff like i think even for the world series final people are asking this people are saying like let's say you're let's say you're a week before some big games you're a week before the world series final or the semi-final or the quarter final whatever how do you prepare for that do you like just warm up an hour before do you train build orders all week or how do you prepare yeah, um, well, in terms of preparation, I'm actually pretty bad at it. In the beginning, when I first joined tournaments, I didn't prepare at all. I just just played the game when it was time. But recently, after ex recently after playing many experts, I noticed that like most of them, they 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 do prepare a lot. Like for example, watching the replays of their opponent, like from beforehand and preparing certain matchups and build orders for it i i do watch some of some replays of my opponent before i play them especially if they're obviously one of the top players but i i don't really prep much so i think that's one thing i could improve in my preparation yeah okay and um jumping all over the place here with these questions by the way but the next one is um uh, are there any upgrades you think in Zero that um, are really, really important that maybe you always get it every single game? Okay. Um, well, for like China's, the subliminal messaging, probably the best upgrade. Never forget to get it. And what else? Chain guns, pretty good. Napalm. I mean, depending on the army, obviously. But those are some of the best upgrades. And for GLA, I guess worker shoes, AP bullets, probably the ones that I get the most. With buggy ammo, obviously. For USA, probably supply lines. And I'm not sure what the other upgrades are called, but the one that makes your units vet up quicker, I think. Yeah, yeah, the advanced training. Yeah, the advanced training, yeah. Cool. Nice little bit of insight there for people. Um, who, in your view, generally has the best GLA, China, and USA skill? Or do you think it's like all one player, like Xcal, for example? For GLA, I would say Xcal probably. I mean, he's just so good with his techs in the beginning. And his late game is just so good. So he kind of has a solid GLA all over. Uh, for China, probably size, actually. I think size has the best China. His, his engagements with his units are always really good. Comes out on top. 
Yeah, it's just decision making, I think, there. For USA, I think most top players are actually pretty solid in USA. They do really well with it. But I think I'll I'll probably say Excal is the best in that one too. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're right about size. He did win the Nuke Mirror tournament, didn't he? And then he won yeah. the challenge after against Excal as well. That was, actually, I thought Excal would win it, to be honest. But size, just a beast yeah, with that good. nuke, isn't he? Yep. Um, is there anyone you get nervous uh, around, like when, when playing? So, for example, you're going to play a big name, a certain name. Is there anyone you get nervous when, when you play them? I don't think it's really for me. It's not really the player. It's more of the situation, like uh, if it's a semi-finals of a tournament or a finals. I think the pressure is just way higher, and that's when you can get nervous. So yeah. But I think I I got nervous like in the beginning when I started playing tournaments. But now it's it's much less. It gets better once you play more, basically. Okay, and at, um, at a high level, like in these in these big tournament games and stuff like that, what percentage yeah. of the game do you think is mental, the mental aspect versus skill? Like some people say, oh, it's eighty percent mental game and twenty percent skill, or what do you think? Well, uh, depending on the players, I would say normally, just to begin with, it's probably fifty fifty, but. If you have a history with a history with a person, like you played them many times before, that's when you can have mental games. Or basically, the mental aspect comes in. Like uh, for example, Fargo and Excal. I think that's why. I mean, Fargo, amazing player, but he kind of chokes against Excal. I think that's mainly due to the mental aspect because they've played many times before. So yeah, you can say maybe. It's 80-20 there. It's different in different situations, I get. I mean, for different players. Yeah, makes sense, actually. Yeah, because Fargo, yeah. like, did amazingly against size, played like a beast. But then in the first yeah. opening games against Excal, you could kind of see it wasn't the same uh, yeah. level, in my, in my view. So I think you're right there. Yeah. Um... Uh, next question do you do you, well do you live a healthy lifestyle and do you think living a healthy lifestyle helps you become a better player i don't know like eat sleep uh, exercise all this kind of stuff definitely i mean living have a health healthy lifestyle definitely will will help you i mean just confidence and your focus your decision making basically is just going to be better so yeah i mean me i'm not sure if i live a live healthy lifestyle but I hope I do like, at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, who would be in your three v three dream team? I think you've had, already kind of answered this before because you said Excal and Logica were your favorite teammates. Yeah, I mean, I I would be down. I'm happy to play with all the top team players, but probably my favorite is Excal and Logica. So yeah, the three of us basically. Okay, and do you have any uh, top tips for players who might be strong in 1v1 but not so much in team games? Is there anything like different that you have to do or consider in team games that doesn't necessarily yeah. just translate from 1v1? I, f I feel like the players that struggle in 2v2s that are pretty good in 1v1s are a bit robotic. Like I think they, they, should, they shouldn't try to do the same strats that they do in a 1v1 in a 2v2 because they just like four players or six players that's six different armies or four different armies it's it's completely different i guess they have to try to think more in a team sense and yeah not not sure but yeah yeah it, may, it makes sense like instead yeah. it's, you could be against well, like in a 1v1, you could be GLA against USA, so you're only against Vs. But then in a, in a yeah. 3v3, you could be against Vs, Gats, and yeah. uh, Buggies or whatever. Yeah, so. Um, okay. Um, uh, who are your top three toughest opponents for you personally? Well, me personally, Excal, probably one of them. Size, probably the second one. And I actually haven't played size much, so it's that's why it's also extra tough because I'm not sure how he plays. Although mm -hmm. I have watched a lot of his games, 
Um, third one, I would probably say Logica. So, X scale size Logica, the three toughest. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Zero Hour is 18 years old, I think, this year. Like in September, it'll be 18 years old since the expansion came out. And it seems yeah. like now more than ever, like the World Series and stuff is always getting like a thousand, thousands of viewers, if you include the Russians as well, probably like 2,000. Um, so it seems like super active. Do you think uh, this will continue or do you think now with lockdowns ending and stuff like that, it'll decline? When do you think Zero Hour's time is up? Uh, well, definitely the lockdown and whatever helps the activity. I mean, it will probably, the activity will probably go down once everything is normal again. But I do hope, I hope that it doesn't die at all. So yeah. And or it gets or it gets remastered or something i mean <laughs> it's epic game yeah that was actually my next question if a, if a zero hour remaster did come out not that we know there is one or ever but would you move over would you move over to a remaster yeah for sure i mean it's basically same game right with just better graphics and maybe some balances yeah that's uh, what we'd hope for yeah i mean if it has a good platform to play on and many new players why not for sure i'll play at least i'll try it out <laughs> so on the topic of balance then what's like the most annoying thing for you in zero like maybe the worst imbalance or the worst bug or something like that what were, if you were in charge of a remaster and you could balance things as well what would be the first thing you'd fix um mm, uh, well one thing I can think of, I'm pretty sure there's probably more, but the combat, you know, I think that just ruins air versus any USA. I, th it's just, it's too hard to stop. I would say, if I could change it, maybe take away the PDLs from, uh, from airs, Chinooks and the combat Chinook. So, in fact, I think it would balance, it would make it easier to play against air force in general so yeah mm -hmm. would you remove the pdls completely like from um all the air units like raptors and stuff as well or no, no only the chinooks. chinooks i mean it's cheaper anyways <laughs> what do you think about keeping it the same but making the tech level higher so you'd have to build like a strategy center to build it do you think that could help or do you think that'd still ruin it uh like an upgrade for the chinooks or what i mean like so currently you have to build the supply in a war factory and then you can unlock the combat chinook oh uh, yeah yeah i think yeah actually true i mean getting a strat then only be being able to get a combat chinook is pretty good actually you can't just rush a combat chinook in the first two minutes <laughs> like plenty of people do <laughs> yeah um okay so i've seen i've seen you in games before where your opponent uh might have been trash talking you i can't remember specifically but i'm sure there's been games of like shea or fargo where they've been typing yeah. easy or or whatever but you always oh, yeah. seem pretty chilled until until like you've won and you might type an easy peasy but uh <laughs> do, does yeah. the do those kind of strats like what fargo uses for example that do they work against you because you, you always seem to remain calm and do you have any specific way of dealing with it or you got any tips for dealing with it? Uh, well, not really. Uh, as we just, I mean, like, as we said before, it's the mental, mental aspect is pretty, it can play a pretty large part in the game. So they're just trying to basically uh, boost their confidence while lowering yours. So I don't think there's any reason to react to it. And to be honest, what they say is not that that toxic i guess you could say is easy it's not i mean every game has it to some extent so yeah okay and um i've just picked four random players here like i want to try and maybe uh maybe we can get something juicy out of it or uh, <laughs> or a controversial or whatever i just so i just okay. picked four random players what's your opinion on the skill level of google boyka fargo and shay or just any of those uh, well all those players i i think they're pretty similar level actually like they're i mean two of them are not experts and two are experts but i think they 
they ha they each have a good chance against each other. Maybe recently Fargo, Fargo and Shay been playing better than the other two, Google and Boyka. But overall, I think they're pretty. They're pretty similar level. Yeah. Okay. And do you play any other games besides Zero? And then do you take any of them seriously if you do? Um, I do actually. I play like F uh, mostly FPS games, like uh, Valorant, Apex Legends. But it's mostly with my friends, and it's just for fun. Nothing serious, like not joining any tournaments or anything. Okay. And what do you say to anyone who might be watching this, but um, doesn't have the game, but they might be thinking of getting the game? Is there any... You recommend getting it, or do you reckon uh, it gets you too addicted or waste too much of your time? What, what's your recommendation to people? Get it, for sure. I mean, it's it's an old game, but it's it's still really fun to play and i mean we need new players so yeah we need more players more active more activity and it's pretty active now so i'm sure they would they would have fun i would recommend it for sure cool that's a good uh, good recommendation um okay so just to let people know then all those interview interview questions you'd seen before and just you had time to prepare for them and stuff but the next yeah. round or the next round of questions you haven't seen before and that's for me to kind of put you on the spot it's re really simple easy questions just like a prime x player versus prime whoever player and you have to okay. answer as quick as you can <laughs> okay. so there's there's about there's about 10 or so okay so prime rage versus prime size um, prime size. Uh, level three tox ambush or level three bounty. Level three bounty. Uh, tank or air. Air force. Uh, super weapon or China. Um, uh, super weapon. Uh, I don't know if you know this one. Do you know General Liang, the boss general? Uh, yeah, I, I think I've yeah. played it before. It's, yeah. So, General Liang, I'm talking about the, the woman actor that plays it. General Liang or Black Lotus? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Black Lotus? I guess, I don't know. Uh, Jarman or Burton? Uh, can I pick a demo Jarman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good answer, good answer. Uh, Prime Boyka versus Prime Shay. Prime Boyka. Best team player, Logica or DK Crazy? Uh, that's a tough one. That's why I picked it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really played with DK Crazy ever in a team together, so it's hard to say. I'll go with Logica. Okay. Prime Excal versus Prime Spalding. Prime Excal. Uh, Nuke Mix or Alpha Auroras? Alpha. Uh, I've got Prime Dackle versus Prime Blind, but before you said you didn't watch old replays, so I can forgive yeah. you if you don't know the answer for this one. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm clueless. I'm not sure who was better, if, I mean, in that time. Okay, uh, Defcon or Twilight Flame? Defcon. Prime Hawkey versus Prime Fargo? Prime Fargo. And final quick fire question Would you sell your zero hour skills for 5,000 US dollars? You, you, so your skill level would go to semi and it would never increase? Before I quit, sure. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's the end of the quick fire questions. Now I've got a zero hour quiz for you that I mentioned to you before. So how good do you think your zero hour knowledge is? Well, to be honest, like just remembering prices and stuff, I'm I'm I pretty I'm pretty shit at it. So I'll try <laughs> my best, but yeah. I might have a few price questions, so uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see how you do. Okay, so how much is a buggy for demo general? I'm pretty sure 
I know Tox was 1.1k, I think. I'm not sure if Demo is the same. Need to take an answer. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. Tox is 1.1k, you're right. Yeah, okay. But I'll go with 1.1k too. Just... So sadly, that is incorrect. The answer is uh, 1k, 1k, slightly cheaper than Tox. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let's see if uh, how, how the next one is. How much does a King Raptor cost with a refinery captured? Oh, uh, yeah, these are not going to be easy questions, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 1K? Uh, it gives a 10 percent discount on 1.1k uh, so yeah it'd be 110. um uh, how much <laughs> how much does a saboteur cost for gla a saboteur mm, uh, i have no idea but i'm just gonna go for 800. Ooh, that, that's correct oh, well. that was the one you had no idea on and you actually got it right so uh yeah 100 points on that one. Um, how much is a hacker for China Vanilla? Uh, is it 700? That's just no. sick. Oh, go on. <laughs> I've given you a slight clue there. I haven't yeah, finished it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 625, right? 625 is correct. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> um, okay, a true or false. So it should narrow it down a bit. True or false, a tank helix builds slower than the other Chinas. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't, but since you're asking me, I'm, I'm going to guess that it does. Correct, it's true. Uh, it builds five seconds slower than the other Chinas. I think it's 20 seconds compared to 25. Oh, okay. That's, I mean, I didn't know that. <laughs> Pro tip for you there. <laughs> um, okay, true or false, a player can remain alive only with a propaganda tower. What? Only with a propaganda tower? Yeah, yeah, so you know like a speaker uh, tower, what China will uh, place down. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, false. It is actually true. Oh, it counts as a building. It counts okay. as a building, yeah. So you could survive with a speaker tower in the corner of the map. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, you might know this one. I think you'll know this one since you're on top of your hotkeys. What's the hotkey to select all air units? Uh, double W? Yep, correct. And okay. is a harder one. What what's the hotkey to select the next or previous worker? I have no idea. Yeah, it's actually... Never knew there was a hotkey for that. <laughs> there is a hotkey. I mean I, I knew it, but I never really use it. I don't know if there's a use for it. I think there probably is a use for it. It's actually okay. con control and the up or down arrow and it selects your next and previous worker that you had selected. Oh, okay. That's that's interesting for maybe scrap denying or something. Yes, yeah, like when you haven't got an idle worker, you could quickly press that. I know it's two keys, oh, yeah. but... Oh, yeah, true. <clears throat> um, what is the hotkey for AP bullets? Um... B? Let's just guess. Correct, it is. Okay. Um, okay. True or false? The Air Force airfield. So if you're if you're AFG, your airfield is twenty percent cheaper, and comes with sixty seven percent more HP than the other US factions. True. True. Correct. I didn't actually know, you know, but the, the sixty seven percent more HP. Probably not a lot of people realize that. I I actually. Mm, I knew about it, I think, because you can't TT it with four terrorists like a normal building. If I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, I think you're right. It does. I can't. I, don't, I should know this to be honest. I think it is it five for a uh, for an yeah. Air Force airfield. I think it's five, isn't it? Y yep. Um. Okay. That's the easiest questions over. Now I've got two really difficult questions. So all of the questions so far have been for a hundred points each, but these last two are so difficult they're worth five hundred each if you get them right. Okay. So. What is the only unit in the game that does not announce itself when it leaves a war factory or an arms dealer? So, oh, oh. you know, like a, a V might come out and it, say, it says it's lying like V ready to roll or whatever it says. Yeah. Well, th there's yeah, one it. unit doesn't do it. <laughs> uh, a sentry draw? I don't know. Just to guess. Oh my god, you are correct. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It is oh, a sentry drone. Really, yeah, that's like I mean it is called a drone, so I was thinking it's not really maybe it doesn't make any sound since it's not like a tank or something. I think it makes I don't know I can't I think it makes a tiny little robot sound, but ju but just like not it doesn't announce itself, it's not a voice or anything. I think that's right okay. anyway, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, you got it right, so uh amazingly i think you're already top of the leaderboard or joint top of the leaderboard you're on 1100 points which i think is the same as what boyka had so if you get this next question right which again is a hard one then you will definitely be top of the leaderboard so final question what percentage health and rate of fire and bonus damage does a vet three unit get what percentage yes, like the it... exact number <clears throat> Um, maybe we'll give you plus or minus 10% or something. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh... But they're not, they're not like really obscure numbers. It's not like plus 33.37%. Okay. They're, 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 yeah. they're multiples of 10 anyway. Okay. For vet 3, right? For a vet 3 unit? For a vet 3 unit, yeah, compared to when it has no veterancy. Um, 70 percent 80 percent no no 70 percent i'll go with 70 percent it's actually not 70 percent it's actually different values for all of them it's 50 percent extra hp 60 percent fire rate and 30 percent damage rate okay was yeah, a very hard question to be honest, but uh, I thought you might yeah. know it. I had, I had a feeling you might know it since you knew the sentry drone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> luck wasn't gonna help me here. However, I still think you're joint top of the leaderboard. I need to probably just verify it against Boyka's old score. Oh no, yeah, you okay. are. You are joint top. So Fargo got 366 points out of 2,000. You just got 1,100 out of 2,000. And Boyka got exactly the same. So you and Boyka are actually joint top of the zero hour knowledge quiz. Hey, that's that's nice. So yeah, congratulations. Maybe at the end of the season or something. Maybe that's to be a trophy or something like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um. So yeah, that's all the questions that I, I had. Is there anything else that I've missed out that you wanted to mention? Any other tips of people or any any shout outs or anything else you wanted to add before we call it a day? Uh I don't think you missed anything, but yeah, I mean, shout out to all the sponsors, the streamers, keeping the game, I mean, active. Shout out to obviously AK Baloney. I mean, he's one of the major donators of, for the past, I don't know, one, two years. I don't know. He probably donated thousands. So yeah, big shout out to him. Also, shout out to my clanmates at OE for just making the game more fun to play and all the support yeah that's all i guess and thank you for for the interview you're more than welcome so just to let everyone know then uh this interview was recorded today wednesday and it just like you know as well it should go live tomorrow um when joker does his little thing on game replays what he needs to do and whatever so yeah look out for it uh, tomorrow okay and uh, yeah, other than that, thank you very much and uh, I'll speak to you soon, Vivid. Okay, no problem. See you, see you. <laughs> cool. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye.